Good morning, library friends. How are you? I hope that you had a wonderful holiday and that you and your families are healthy. I've got three great stories today. I'm starting with one because it's the season called Jingle Jangle. And this is by Nicholas Smee. And it was published in 2008 by Boxer Books. Jingle Jangle. And the main character is a horse. And it also involves a cat, a dog, a, you're right, a pig. And the fourth friend is a duck. Right. All right. Let's read Jingle Jingle. And I even have some jingle bells to help set the mood. Okay. Here we see the four friends in the sleigh. Who wants a ride in my sleigh, asks Mr. Horse. We do, please, Mr. Horse. Say cat and dog and pig and duck. Hold on tight, says Mr. Horse, and off they go. And look, there they are all bundled in the sleigh and covered with a blanket. Jingle, 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 jingle. And you can see the horse has bells on his four legs and on his blanket and on around his neck, part of the reins. Jingle, jingle. Let's go over the fields, say cat and dog and pig and duck. Very well, says Mr. Horse. But hold on tight. And off they go. Jingle, jingle, crunch, crunch. What would be making the crunch sound? Snow. Sometimes hard snow is crunchy. Jingle, jingle, crunch, crunch. Jingle, jingle, crunch, crunch. Can we slide down the hill, please, Mr. Horse? Asked cat and dog and pig and duck. Very well, says Mr. Horse. Is there room for me? He wants to squeeze into the sleigh, too. Do you think he'll fit? Let's see. He does. There's Mr. Horse in the sleigh. Of course, Mr. Horse, but make sure you hold on tight say cat and dog and pig and duck and off they go jingle jingle swoosh swoosh jingle jingle faster faster goes the sleigh jingle jingle swoosh swoosh faster and faster goes the sleigh Look out! Look out! Oh my, they're heading toward a snowman. And the rabbit is telling them, look out! Wee! Look, friends, all the E's. Wee! Oh no. And the cat and pig and dog and horse and duck all get tossed out of the sleigh. Jingle plop, jingle plop, jingle plop, plop, plop. Cat and dog and pig and duck land in the cold and crunchy snow. And so does Mr. Horse. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie me, cry cat and dog and pig and duck. So they're worried about poor Mr. Horse. We can see part of his back and ears, but they don't know if he's all right. That was so cool, says happy Mr. Horse. And look at him smile. He wasn't hurt. He thought it was cool. Really fun. 
come on then, Mr. Horse, say cat and dog and pig and duck. And off they all go again. Jingle, jingle, swoosh, swoosh, wee. Say it with me, wee. And that's it. Very good, thank you for helping me. Okay, I'll put the bells down. Now, my second book is a brand new one by John Jory and Pete Oswald called The Couch Potato. This is by the same men who did The Bad Seed, The Good Egg, and The Cool Bean. And the newest one is called The Couch Potato. This was just published in 2020 by Harper Collins. So let's read this. Call the potatoes. I am a potato. Not a small potato like my brother. Not a sweet potato like my mother. There we go. Not a mashed potato like my uncle Stu. I am a couch potato. Oh, yeah, it's true. My favorite place to slouch is on the couch. I spend all my free time sitting in this exact spot. And he closes his eyes and says, Ah, there's a letter A and all the H's. Ah. Why would I ever leave this comfy, cozy couch? It's got everything a couch potato could need. See, I have this, looks like a remote, and this, a yo-yo, and this. It looks like um, the controls for an Xbox or PlayStation, and one of these, one of those paddle games, and those headphones and this popcorn right and that and these look at his little bunny slippers oh and this check it out this button activates a gadget that fetches me snacks whenever i want bam impressed and i don't have to move an inch much easier than going into the kitchen If the most important thing is lot in life is to be comfortable at all times, then I think I've got this figured out. He says again, ah, he even has some robotic arms that comb his hair. But wait, there's so much more. I haven't revealed the absolute best part about my whole setup. It's everything you see in front of me. Take it all in. Pretty spectacular, right? Yes, it's a sea of shimmering screens from wall to shining wall. What a joy. What bliss. Bliss means happiness. These screens feature my favorite shows. This screen has my unanswered messages. These screens are where I play video games. And this screen is a live stream of my friend, my best bud for life. That's a lot of screens. This is how my pals and I spend quality time together. It's much easier than trying to meet up somewhere like folks did in the old days. That's for sure. So he's talking to his friend on the screen. Hey, Spuddy. Hey, pal Tato. Yes, from this very couch, I can control everything in my life all the time with just a few taps and a couple clicks. 
Not bad, eh? Ah, the potato says again. Yes, sirree, this is the life. At least that's what I thought until the other day. Wonder what happens. Something strange happened. There was a knock at the door. It was a delivery. Whoosh, it came down his tube that brings deliveries. It was my newest device. Woohoo! A video camera that would allow me to watch myself react while I was watching all my favorite shows. All I had to do was plug it in and my room, nay, my kingdom, would be complete. But look, friend, friends, there's already five plugs into this outlet, and he's going to put one more in. And when he does, it says pew, and bolts of little lightning. Uh-oh. Everything went dark. Look out. Coming through. Whoops. Ow. Womp. So he had one too many plugs and everything went dark. I made it to the window. I pulled back the curtains. The sun seemed brighter than I remembered. There was nothing better to do, so I decided to take a walk with my dog, Tater, outside. It had been a while. He had spent so much time indoors, he hadn't been out for a long time. Everything seemed so vivid. Vivid means bright, sharp like a high-resolution, 156-inch curved screen, but even more realistic. Something smelled fresh. After a few moments, I realized that it was the air. I heard a noise, some chirps, a ringtone perhaps, but no. I looked up to see some birds, right? I wandered down the street from block to block and across the neighborhood. Eventually, I found a park with a hill. There was a massive tree on top. There, excuse me, it looked like a desktop background, only it was real. And the potato was walking up and he says, neat. I leaned against the tree. It wasn't as comfortable as my couch. Not even close. But after a while, it wasn't so bad. And he says again, Ah! He closes his eyes, and his dog Tater's eyes are closed. Any worries about the power outage and what I might be missing drifted away. I wasn't thinking about my favorite show or unanswered messages or anything else, really. I noticed the stillness, the view, the sky, the clouds, the sunset, and those colors. My goodness. It took a while because there was no fast-forward option, but eventually the sun sank below the horizon. By the time I got home, the power was back on. And he sits down and says, whew. I hit the button to brush my teeth. I pulled the lever to change into my pajamas. I turned the knob to watch a bedtime story. His bedtime story is, good night, Spud. Then I noticed my reflection in one of the screens. I wondered how much of my life had been spent in that very spot. It was then and there that I made the decision to peel myself off the couch a bit more often. Maybe every day even.
And so that's what I've done. I've started hanging out with my friends, my best buddies outside. We've started biking and hiking. And what are they doing here? Swimming, right? Swimming and hiding and seeking. Sometimes we have snacks and play board games. Sometimes we talk all day. We might just watch the clouds. There's no big plan. We just see what happens. It makes me wonder, what if I don't need to be totally comfortable? What if I'm happier when I have a better balance between my gadgets and the world outside? Because it turns out that I'm more than just a couch potato. I'm an amusing potato. Amusing means funny. I'm a smart potato. They're playing chess. I'm a kind potato. He's giving his dog some bubbles in his bath. I'm an entertaining potato. And I may sit on a hill and watch the sunset potato. Yes, there's a great big world out there and I want to be part of it in person. But don't get me wrong, at the end of a long day after I've run and played and talked and laughed with my friends, I still think it's awfully nice to slouch on the couch. Ah, and the book he's reading is called The Catcher in the Fry. And that's it. Good. Good. The couch potato. Okay. My last story today is also fairly new. We've had it a few weeks here. It's called The Smeds and Smooze. It's written by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. And it was uh, published again just this year by Scholastic Books. The Smeds and the Smooze. This book reminds me of a Dr. Seuss book with some of the unusual words and the rhyming. See what you think. The illustrations are beautiful. By a lubular lake on a far off planet, there lived a young smed and her name was Janet. Not far away, on a humblety hill, there lived a young smoo by the name of Bill. Smeds and Smoos. The smeds on their lake like nothing better than splashing about and getting wetter and wetter. But Janet grew bored with this watery play. And early one morning, she tiptoed away. The smooths jumped about on their humplety hill. They bounced up and down and never stood still. But Bill was beginning to think, this is boring. So early one morning, he set off exploring. Janet met Bill in the Werpular Wood, where the trockles grew tall and the glob palms smelled good. The two rubbed antennae, their antennae on the top of their heads. She told him, excuse me, they rubbed antennae and played all day long. She told him a story. He sang her a song. Then they climbed to the top of a gerberry coot and nibbled its juicy and jellyful fruit. T 
till who should disturb them but Grandfather Smed. Shaking his fist, he angrily said, Never, never play with a smoo. They're such a nasty shade of blue. For the hundredth time, I say to you, Never, never play with a smoo. Grandmother Smoo was close behind, and this is how she spoke her mind. Never, never play with a smed. They're such a dreadful shade of red. I'll say again what I've always said. Never, never play with a smed. Years went by on the far-off planet. Janet missed Bill and Bill missed Janet. But off they crept whenever they could to sing and play in the Werpular Wood. The two of them grew and decided to wed. Do you know what wed, decided to wed? That means they decided to get married. But what do you think their grandparents said? Never, never marry a smoo. They're a beastly bunch. They're a crazy crew. They drink black tea. They eat green stew. Never, never marry a smoo. And Grandmother Smoo said, Never, never marry a smed. My dearest child, are you off of your head? They drink pink milk. They eat brown bread. Never, never. Marry a smed. Oh, look at this rocket. Janet and Bill stole out that night while their family slept, and the schoon shone bright. Instead of a moon, it's a schoon. They clambered inside the smed's red rocket. Grandfather Smed had forgotten to lock it. Bill pressed the button and Janet steered. When their families woke, they had both disappeared. The smoo said, your Janet has stolen our Bill and lured him away from the humplety hill. The Smed said, it's Bill who has stolen our Janet and taken her off to a distant planet. The smooths climbed into their rocket of blue, and they said to the smeds, you'd better come too. Suspicious and scowling. Do you know what scowling means? It means, oh, an angry, crabby face. Suspicious and scowling, they soared into space. Till they reached planet Vumjum, a dry, dusty place. The Vums had long arms, which they waved in the air, but they didn't have news of the runaway pair. The next stop was Lurglestrope, covered in roses and watered by bees with small eyes and long noses. Lurgle strope. My. They touched down in Grimbletosh, coated in grime. Grime is dirt, very dirty. They searched planet Glurch and found nothing but slime. One morning, the smooths found they'd run out of tea. So the smeds shared their milk which was pink as could be. Then Grandfather Smed said, my hair needs a trim. And Grandmother Smoo kindly cut it for him. Well, that was nice. She cut Grandfather Smed's hair. They landed on Skloop, where the Skloopies wore kilts. 
kilts or little skirts, then flew to Klabu, where the clobs walked on stilts. They searched all year long, and they searched longer still, but they didn't find Janet, and they didn't find Bill. Alas, said the smooze, and the smed said, Alack, we have failed in our quest. We had better turn back. So they turned and flew home to their very own planet, and far down below them they saw... Bill and Janet. The rocket touched down and they ran to the wood where the trockles grew tall and the glom -pom smelled good. And there in the glade by the rocket of red were the runaway smooth and the runaway smed. They would got lost and flew home again only to find that all of the rest had left them behind. There was joy, jam, and jumping. Then Janet said, maybe you'd like to make friends with our dear little baby. A baby? A red one? A blue one? But no. The baby was purple from head to toe. They all hugged the smooth smed, their new baby brother, and Grandpa and Gran even hugged one another. They laughed and they splashed and they danced with delight and they played with that baby from morning till night. They made him a rattle. There's the rattle. They made him a flute. They fed him the fruit of the chairberry coot. Then they sang by the light of the silvery scoon, and you can sing too if you make up a tune. Play with the smeds and play with the smooths. Play with whichever friends that you choose. Then close your eyes, and while you snooze, dream of the smeds and dream of the smooths. That's it. Look at the funny friends we see at the end. Oh, very good listening. I'm so glad you joined me for these stories. I will be back for Thursday Story Times in January. And I hope to see you in the library soon. Thanks, friends. Bye-bye.